Treatment of hazards. Um, we have seen in the uh, previous part the how the internal uh, failures are dealt with in the deterministic approach. Let's see now how we treat the hazards, uh, internal or external hazards. <coughs> Treatment of uh, hazard is uh, done through avoidance of the hazards and for instance that uh, could be done by sighting if you want to avoid uh, a flooding you will set the platform at a level where the flooding could not uh, uh, reach uh, the uh, the facility or by laying out uh, the facility for instance in making uh, geographical separation of redundant equipments or by probabilistic consideration so that's the first way of uh, treatment of hazard. There is a, a second way if the hazard cannot be avoided is to protect the safety function against the, uh, the consequence of uh, the hazards. And uh, we will look at the two kind of uh, two, two examples. The first one is uh, about fire. And again, you will see here how we used the uh, defense in depth uh, approach. The first level is through the prevention. Uh, so a way of preventing fire is to limit the uh, amount of combustible materials and for instance uh, and especially during uh, uh, the period where the reactor is shut down where there is a lot of maintenance being done uh, it's important to organize a storage area in order to avoid accumulation of waste or uh, any materials that could be uh, combustible. The second level is uh, through uh, monitoring. So each uh, uh, nuclear plant is equipped with uh, fire detection system, uh, with uh, of course alarms, and uh, the, the third level to mitigate the consequence of fire uh, is uh, first to uh, install uh, fire resistant rooms in order if uh, the one uh, fire uh, spread in, in, in a room it will not propagate to another one so that imply uh, putting some fire doors or fire dampers on the ventilation system and <coughs> in addition as a mitigation uh, elements they are fire extinguishing uh, system such as uh, sprinkler or deluge and the last uh, line of uh, mitigation is through the uh, fire fighting teams on uh, each uh, nuclear plant there is permanently on call uh, some uh, firemen who are uh, accustomed to intervene and to try to uh, extinguish the, the fire. So we have seen an internal hazard, uh, the fire. Let's look now at an external hazard, the uh, plan uh, crash. Uh, through the uh, statistic of the aeronautic industry, we can make a distinction uh, between three kind of uh, flights, the uh, commercial air flights, the military flights and uh, general flights. Um, the commercial flight, there are uh, several hundreds of thousands uh, such flights per year and the probability of accident per flight is in the order of 10 to the minus 6. Now if we combine that with the, uh, uh, the, the, the probability of the crash reaching uh, uh, per year uh, a safety function uh, with some conservative, uh, conservative <coughs> uh, estimate. The result is in the order of 10 to the minus 8 per year and per uh, safety function. So this uh, figure is sufficiently low for uh, the disregarding of this kind of, uh, of accident. Uh, the military flight, uh, the number is a little bit lower, but the uh, probability of accident per flight is about uh, 10 times more than for commercial flight. Therefore, the, uh, the probability of uh, crashes uh, of a military aircraft is in the order of 10 to the minus set, uh, 7. Uh, <coughs> So, in general, uh, uh, military flight crash are not considered 
unless uh, a nuclear plant is uh, sited not very far for uh, for uh, uh, a military airfield and and for instance uh, in some countries uh, and in some areas the uh, the nuclear plant is protected against uh, military flight crash uh, but the um, the general flights uh, are in the order of uh, several million a year and uh, the probability of accident per flight is uh, also uh, 10 times more than for the military and so the uh, approximate probability of uh, during a crash that uh, reaching a safety function is in the order of 10 to the minus 6 so therefore uh, the design of nuclear plants have to consider this kind of uh, airplane crash and uh, the there are two uh, different uh, planes considered as a sort of a reference, uh, the Lee jet and the Cessna, uh, one having its motor on, on the top uh, of, of the... Uh, of so let's see on, on this figure how the, the European pressurizer reactor is protected against uh, a planned crash. So the if you uh, have a look from uh, above, uh, you have here in the center the, the reactor building itself and uh, around here the four redundant train of uh, safety system and here the fuel building and you have here the diesel generator the uh, which pr uh, provide the powers to the plant if there is uh, a loss of, of the electric uh, grid. So <coughs> you have on on two of the safety system and on the reactor building and on the uh, fuel building you have an aircraft shell which cover completely uh, these uh, equipments, these uh, buildings and uh, that are resistant to the uh, the crash of a plan. Uh, the two other train here as well as the diesel generator are separated geographically so the probability of reaching by the same crash to the two of them is, is uh, uh, very very low and so this is a way separ uh, geographical separation is a way is to protect uh, the whole facility against uh, uh, this kind of events and of course there is some auxiliary uh, building or auxiliary facility without any safety role which are not protected.